everyone, I'm Jenny, and we are back for January's Bloggers Inside. Today I am interviewing the beautiful Charlotte from Right Like No One's Watching. <laughs> and today she's going to be sharing her amazing beauty knowledge with us. Hi Charlotte, thank Hello. you for being my guest. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course, <laughs> thank you for inviting me to your beautiful home. Today, um, why don't we start off with telling the readers a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I blog at Right Like No One's Watching, which is kind of like a parenting, lifestyle -y type blog. Um, I have a little boy who is two and a half and his name is Bill. And I live in this house mm. with uh, my other half Mark and two... Uh, temperamental cat um, and yeah and I'm really into beauty which is why I'm here today to teach me <laughs> who is new at the whole beauty world so when you were growing up when was the first time you fell in love with beauty products um, it's a bit of a weird one actually for me because my mum is not into beauty at all so mum if you're watching this hi <laughs> um, but yeah she she was never ever into it so I had my mum's got a twin um, and my auntie Julie she was into it all the time so I remember when I used to go around to her house I'd always like peer through her dressing table and see what she had and that was where the bug sort of started for me because it was right? so new for me that I just found it really exciting all oh, the new products yeah all the shiny things I'm like a magpie <laughs> <laughs> I love it See, I was the opposite, it all intimidates me, so I still don't know what I'm doing, hence why I'm here today. Right, um, was there someone in the media or a celebrity that inspired you, or a certain look that inspired you? Um, I'm a big fan of the smoky eye, so I like uh, celebs like Megan Fox and things like that, and the Kardashians do do it pretty well but in Definitely. terms of like yeah I mean in terms of makeup for me I just like to have a play around with it so I like take little looks from everywhere and I see if I can recreate them on myself because my face is obviously very different from someone else's like your face so things will look different on me as they will on other people right do you have so are you completely self-taught then in your makeup or did you have your auntie help you, give you tips and... Well, she used to give me little makeup, um, like makeovers when I was little and I remember doing that and then dancing around to the Spice Girls and they used to film <laughs> me, so there was a video of that somewhere. Um, we must find this video. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, no, for the most part, when I got on my own and I was trying to learn how to do it, a lot of it was self-taught for me, because um, I just, I love art and things like that, so I don't know if that's where it comes from, because I get excited when I put it all on my face, so it was really just kind of trial and error, and then just getting excited about things, and then YouTube tutorials, which are awesome if you're getting into it. Right, that was my next question. <laughs> I'm really bad at like certain looks like the smoky eyes. Do you think beauty YouTube tutorials are amazing? Should there be more of them to help people like me? Oh my gosh, they are awesome. They're so, so good. Um, my favourite, if you're getting started and you want to learn like proper looks from like basic foundation to contour into eyes, um, Pixie Woo, you'll have heard about them loads, I'm sure. Okay. They are so, so good. And I watch them if I really want something, you know, that's going to teach me the techniques. Um, but there are loads out there. If you if you go onto YouTube and search for like smoky eye tutorial or, you know, red lip, then you'll mm -hmm. find loads that you can learn from and have a go with. And the only problem is you'll want to buy a load of stuff afterwards, <laughs> which... So hide your bake cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just learning now, right? Um, do you think there's good starter kits or starter brands that you should start out with and work your way up? Because I know you can get really high end and you can start off with your grocery small beauty aisle. What do you recommend? Um, if you're starting out, I would definitely start with drugstore stuff because it is cheaper. And you know, if you don't like something or it's not the right color for you or shade and you just don't get on with it, then you're not wasting too much money. But with things like foundation in particular, because I'm a big foundation nut, I would definitely go and get like tested and get it matched up properly. Because if you're going to spend your money and you want to go out and feel confident with it on your skin, you want to make sure that you're not going to look like an oompa loompa or yeah, you you know, the orange line yeah, yeah. I know because that's just a no no <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I would definitely um, invest a little bit more on the staple pieces like foundation um, because they make a really big difference to your skin but blusher and mascara you can get loads of drugstore stuff that's you know just as good and right. you can start out with that and not spend too much money where would you recommend someone going to get tested you know like do you go to the mall or is there a special place that you go to get the best foundation um, I would go to if you've got a really big boots near you the bigger one have loads of stands for like you know Estee Lauder or Clinique or things like that and you can get tested there and then obviously there's like Selfridges and things like that but the bigger the branch the more option you've got most of the time. Right so for skin tone and hair color do you think people should stick to the color palettes that they're always told to stay in here or do you think people can pull off any look if it's done right? 
I think, yeah, to a degree, I think any look can be pulled off if you do it right and you, you know, you work and match it with your skin a little bit because um, I have green eyes, for example, so colours that suit really well for me are um, tones that are opposite, so like ready, ready tones and coppers, oh. but sometimes that can give you a bit of like a pink eye look, which is oh. <laughs> which isn't great. So it's just about finding the right tones and then and trying to, you know, if you really, really want to wear a red lip, there are so many red lips to choose from with different tones and you just got to swatch them on the back of your hand and, and have a go. But this again, the red lipstick, everybody wears the red lips, but I just feel like I could never pull it off. No, I'm too the same. You know something, like everyone thinks I'm really into makeup, but the red lip or any sort of bright lip really, really freaks me out when I put it on. <laughs> but it's my mission this year to wear bright lips. So I've been wearing like fuchsia and like a purple recently. Oh, like, moving towards the red lip look. Yeah, and you know, if, if you find a colour, you know, just hold on to it and don't let it go because if it's each you just, you're going to buy it over and over again. Really. What is your biggest beauty failure that you've come across to yourself? Um, for me, I think it was the overblocking of the eyebrows. We've all done it. We've all been there, haven't we? I mean, now I get a lot of compliments on my brows because I. I've grown, grown them out. They're so, great shape. Yeah, they're really thick now, which is <laughs> it's crazy. But I used to pluck them to like little lines, and it really changes your face shape because oh, I've got look, yeah. Definitely. Because if if you've got big eyes, for example, you kind of want to balance your brows out with them a little bit. Yeah, you don't so, want, like, pencil yeah, line. Yeah, like, because you just look a bit like a caricature or like <laughs> a, a weird cartoon character. So that for me was definitely the brows. I looked awful. <laughs> so no drawing on those eyebrows anymore and shaving them off. Yeah. I know people used to shave them off. Oh I can't. Yeah, oh. I know people that have shaved them off and drawn them on. Oh my god. It's gosh. so scary. Don't do it. Don't do that. What's, <laughs> speaking of the beauty no nos, we all know that self tanning with the streaks is all a big no no. What's your biggest tip for everyone is beauty no no. An absolute beauty no no. I would definitely, definitely never go down that route of um, putting concealer on the lips because you just end up having like invisible lips. And oh, do you no. remember that trend? <laughs> yeah. But everyone just had like white lips almost, and it just it doesn't look normal. And like obviously, um, putting makeup on is meant to enhance your features, not like erase them. So definitely don't do that. <laughs> you can go for a I new look. That era. Yeah. Of the whole I remember trying it and thinking, no, this doesn't work. It always just dried your lips out. I mean, yeah. I dry lips anyway all the time, so I can't imagine even putting more foundation or something, concealer on my lips to make it even worse. No, I don't know how that was ever a thing, but it, it was, and it we happens. should just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your three favourite products to buy this year? Okay, um, I've got a few with me actually, so I'll try and show you. Um, I've got a few, and I don't know if that's cheating, but I'll go through them really quickly because I think it's important. Um, so foundation, like I was saying before, is massive for me. Like I just think if you've got a good base, then everything else is going to look so much better. So for summer, um, I like to use the Clinique Moisture Surge uh, CC Cream. Now this is absolutely amazing. It just corrects your skin a little bit more, and it's not too heavy. So if you're getting a tan or you don't want to put too much on your face because you're getting a little bit sweaty when it's hot then this is perfect uh, a foundation that I'm in love with at the moment like I can't rave about it enough is the um, YSL um, I think it's the Tisha Clack one um, and it's absolutely brilliant I have it on, it on today, today. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. and it's so glowy um, and it's like medium coverage so if you're going on nights out or things like that I would really recommend this one um, concealers this is so cheap and I'm sure loads of people have heard about it already but it's the collection lasting perfection I think it's about four or five pounds this stuff can cover the worst spot imaginable um, and I, I think this is like my 20th tube now and then um, I go on about this a lot on my own blog, but this is MAC Soft and Gentle and it's a highlighter. It's so I pretty. It's beautiful. It, it, oh, it's so good. And I put it on the tops of my cheeks, down my nose, I put it in the corners of my eyes to give them a bit of a pop and it's amazing. You can also put it on your eyes as an eyeshadow as well. And then for lips, um, you might have heard of this because Kylie Jenner, one of the Kardashian sisters, wears this a lot. But this is Brave uh, from MAC and I have that on today and I think it's like the perfect sort of natural pinky lip colour and I'm obsessed with it. So if you want to treat yourself, I know they're a little bit more expensive, then if you make the investment you'll be really pleased with them, I promise. Great. Thank you, Charlotte, for oh, being yeah. our little beauty guru today. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. I hope you've learned as much as I have today. And stay tuned for another Blogger's Insight next month. Bye for now. Bye.